Well, here are my thoughts on it. Uh, a speech uh, is a talk given by usually one person to a group of people. Um, why do people write speeches? Well, there's a, a number of reasons, but a group of people who disagree with your argument, you might deliver a speech to a group of people who disagree with your argument with a view to changing their mind. Um, or you might deliver a speech to a group of people who needed to be persuaded to behave in a certain way. I mean, a lot of that's gone on recently with this uh, lockdown and so on, with the government making speeches about the importance of us all um, staying home if we possibly can. Um, and your writing will be changed, your speech writing will change depending on um, you know, how assertive you, you feel you need to be. If you're talking to adults, um, you'll probably have a, a more assertive tone than perhaps you would do if you, were, uh, if you were talking to children. So if you've got something like that, that's fine. Fantastic. OK, as ever, the learning objective doesn't go into your book. Uh, the learning objective is to explore the use of rhetoric in speeches. And the title, uh, which does go into your book, is the use of rhetoric in persuasive speech writing. Uh, now, rhetoric is uh, a word you might not have heard before, um, but all it simply means. Okay, now you've had a think about that, I'll uh, reveal to you what they are. I'm sure you all got them anyway. You always do when you're in the classroom. There's no reason why you wouldn't do now. They are direct address, anecdote and alliteration, facts, opinion, rhetorical questions and repetition, emotive language and exaggeration, statistics and triplets. Um, I hope we can all uh, remember what they are. You have your books there, so of course you can look back and look up if you've forgotten perhaps what an anecdote is, which is simply a personal story um, that you tell that supports your point. Very powerful part of your anecdote, possibly what I think is uh, the most powerful part of persuasive writing. And of course, we have to remember at all times our spelling, punctuation and grammar. So we need a good vocabulary. Use all the, all the, uh, all the, all the words that you can, all the powerful words that you can. Uh, make sure your spelling and punctuation is A, that you use it and B, that you use it properly. Now, we've done quite a lot of work on semicolons, so I'd like to see those in there. They can be very powerful in speeches. Range of sentences, that simply means sentence lengths. Um, used for effect we'll come back to that um, a bit later and a range of uh, different punctuation marks as i've already said okay now we're going to use these rhetorical devices to write the uh, the uh, first half of a speech um, i put us on the slide here the openers that we had from all the last from the last lesson i won't go over them all again um, but you can see uh, you'll need to pick one of those to open the uh, speech that I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment, and then I'll show you one that I've done. Now, you're going to write a short speech that contains at least five of those rhetorical, as we know now, it's really just another word for persuasive devices. And this will be uh, three quarters of a page minimum. If you want to write more, fantastic. And I'd really like you to send some of these uh, speeches to me so that I can a, see them, um, because speech writing is something that we're actually quite good at in this group. And um, and also, I would like to give out some achievement points. So send me your work and I will look at it and reward it accordingly. So what I want you to do is to write a speech addressing the FA, that's the Football Association, arguing that the league should be played with a, without a crowd while lockdown continues. You know that... Um, uh, the the uh, Football League has been suspended, as has uh, events like Wimbledon and so on. Um, and it just struck me as, you know, peculiar that um, they could, you know, you can't keep those things going. I think the benefit of them is uh, very powerful for people who are stuck at home. Sport means an awful lot to an awful lot of people. Um, and I still think there would be value in, uh, in playing those um, events like football and like Wimbledon and so on out into empty stadiums. So I want you to write a speech addressing the Football Association arguing that the league should be played without a crowd while lockdown continues. Now think about your target audience. Who is your target audience for this? Of course, it's the Football Association, which is uh, a bunch of um, quite old for the most part. Um, I'm sure it's all men. Um, who are at the top of football, who are probably quite out of touch with what it means to the average working man or and woman and child, um, who, uh, you know, to have their football taken away is a really big deal. I think they probably run it more as a, as a business like that and they've forgotten about those people. Um, 
So that's the uh, audience. The purpose of your speech obviously is to persuade them to, uh, you know, to play the matches behind closed doors uh, in empty stadiums. So use at least five of the rhetorical devices you listed earlier in the lesson. And remember to have a look back at the work you did in the last lesson on opening speeches. And I've shown you a slide on that. So pick one of those openings, uh, write that, um, and then uh, and then go on to uh, to uh, write at least three quarters of a page, employing five of the rhetorical devices. Now make a plan. We do this every time we do something like this. So you can pick your opening. You can uh, maybe write that, and then uh, and then pick your five rhetorical devices and just plan them out as paragraphs. OK, OK, year 10, and here's one that I've just uh, started. I've started with the um, with the uh, short sentence openings, my uh, preferred one. Football is almost literally a lifeline for a lot of people. It's a powerful opening. Um, how would you feel if the high point of your week, the time when you met all your friends, was suddenly taken away from you? It's a rhetorical question, of course. And then I think it's important that the league carries on in empty stadiums while the lockdown is in place. And that's my opinion. So you've got the short sentence opener, you've got the um, rhetorical question, and then you've got the opinion. So uh, off you go. And as I say, I would really love to see your work. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Thanks, Year 10.